For some reason, this plant has been the hardest plant to keep watered properly. It seems to wilt at a moment's notice and I never really know how much moisture is in the soil. Good news is when I put water in it, it comes right back to life. Well, Apollo Automation to the rescue. They sent me their PLT1 plant sensor that's gonna tell me when I need to water this plant. And I can set up some automations in Home Assistant, add this to Home Assistant via ESP Home, and then hopefully the plant will survive longer than what it's going to do now. So let's get started. So let's talk about the PLT1 specs. You can order this off the Apollo Automation website. I will have an affiliate link down below in the description, but you can get this um, from here and it's made for Home Assistant. Just keep that in mind. You can use it with other stuff, but it's really just designed to be with Home Assistant. You can select the short temperature sensor probe or no probe at all. Uh, and then you can choose to, to buy a charger. Typically it's less than uh, an amp or so or maybe around an amp of usage. Most phone chargers will handle that just fine. So if you have one laying around, you can use that. It's USB-C, remember that. Uh, there is, as of this recording, a little bit of a delay in shipping. So just keep that in mind if you're watching this. Uh, this is an indoor plant sensor. It measures moisture, air temperature, humidity, lux, and UV. And it also has an onboard buzzer and an addressable RGB LED. So you could alert it visually or audibly if you want to do that and take some action. If your plant's thirsty, you can make it sing to you through the buzzer or turn the light on or whatever. The sensor comes in a, a battery, non-battery version. The non-battery version is the one I'm showing you today and it's a little bit smaller or significantly as they say. The battery version is still being worked on. It's not ready yet. So keep checking back for that. Uh, it uses a capacitive versus a resistive moisture sensor. It is claimed to offer a better accuracy and durability compared to those resistive sensors. And the ground contact portion is protected by a conformal coating that protects that, that wire in there and ensures that it lasts a lot longer. And it also keeps it from getting corroded due to being stuck in the wet soil all the time. Uh, details of this thing, it has a AHT20F air temperature and humidity sensor includes dust protection as an LTR390 UV sensor for the lux and UV measurements. So you can see what your light level is around where the plant is. And then it has again, the RGB LED, a piezo buzzer, and it has an optional DS18B20 uh, waterproof soil temperature, which you can buy with it. That is uh, this temperature sensor right here. You can buy that, just plugs into the device. Don't have to do anything, but just plug it in and use it. And it's uh, 41 by 26 by 14 millimeters. You can always 3D print the files and you can always look at the code on GitHub. So let's take a look at the sensor itself. So here's the PLT1 itself. It's a uh, pretty small, at least this version is. This is about four and a half inches um, by about just a little over an inch and a half has a capacitive sensor in there. And this right here you'll see is this conformance or this uh, sensor wire and it has a conformal layer, the ground contact portion. Anyway, it, this is what keeps it protected. Uh, you can see kind of that layer and the reflection of the light there. Some of the sensors you can buy now will corrode over time. This particular sensor has um, that coating on there that makes it last a lot longer. Uh, it comes with, um, the USB-C plug, there is a battery version that will be out as of this recording in uh, a month or so. A little bit bigger than this one, but this one you plug in uh, all the time. So there's the USB-C plug for it. Here is the plug for the optional temperature sensor. Here's a reset button on the side. RGB light is behind this little cover right here. And then this is the boot button on the side. Uh, popping this open, it's super simple. And you can print your own case. They give you the information to do that. You can change the color if you want to, or just print something entirely differently. If you're into that kind of thing and you have the resources like a 3d printer, here is the ESP 32 C three mini board. This is the heart of communicating with it. There's the Wi-Fi antenna for that RGB light right here. Here is the reset button right there. And then here's the boot button on this side. And I believe this is probably the light sensor. 
Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what it is. And then on the back side, you have the plug where the temperature, the optional temperature sensor goes into. It's just a little, uh, what is that? A three and a quarter inch plug or something like that. And then you have the USB-C power plug for that right there. Uh, and that's it. The whole thing all nightly, nicely contained on this little circuit board with the little capacitive sensor wire. Just stick it back in the case, snap it back together. And there's the PLT one. Now there is an optional temperature sensor that I talked about. This you just stick down in the soil of your plant. And this end of course plugs into that piece right there. And now you have temperature sensing for your plant as well as capacitive mo moisture sensing. All right, so next up is adding this to Home Assistant. And this is just like any other ESP home device. We're going to connect it to power and then we're gonna to connect to its Wi-Fi hotspot. So it has a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. And then we will configure our local Wi-Fi network. And after that, it'll show up on the network and Home Assistant will discover it. So let's dig into that process. So you start by plugging in your PLT1 and then you go to your favorite device, in this case, my phone. You're gonna search for the PLT1 hotspot. Click on that. It's gonna to connect to it. And it's checking the internet connection. It won't find an internet connection, obviously. If it asks, you're gonna tell it that you wanna go ahead and connect even though it doesn't have an internet connection. Then you open a browser and you're gonna to go to an IP address. If it doesn't automatically do that for you, 192.168.4.1. Now in some cases, if this doesn't work right, you need to go to airplane mode. And then make sure your Wi-Fi is turned on so you can still see the Apollo hotspot. And then once that happens, as long as it's not trying to do something on your cellular network, then you would select your network that you want this to connect to. And then you would put in the password and save it. And now it's gonna to try to connect to the network. This is pretty similar to most of the ESP devices that you're gonna to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Now, once you get it configured to your Wi-Fi, it should show up in Home Assistant as a discovered device. So if you click over here and you have your sidebar, click on notifications, you'll see new devices discovered. Click on check it out. And then here you have your Apollo PLT1. Just click on configure and you'll click on that. And now it's configured. You can choose an area to put it in where the plant is or whatever, and then you're finished. And once you do that, it's gonna show up in ESP Home just like any of your other ESP devices. You can click on that and you can look for that plant sensor and you're gonna end up with all of the different things that you can get with this sensor. So you've got your air humidity, your air temperature, the lighting, the lux or UV index. So the light level and the UV index, soil moisture. It's currently not in the soil, so that's gonna be inaccurate. And then your soil temperature is also unknown. If you don't have the, the soil temperature sensor, it will show up as unknown, but you can add that later on. And then you can turn, of course, turn on the RGB light. So if you look at it here, there's a sensor plugged in to the power and I turn on the RGB light, you'll see the light light up there. And then you have a number of configuration options. One thing I wanna point out, this sleeping thing here is gonna be something that's gonna be important later on for the battery version. For now, we're not gonna worry about it. We don't wanna to go to sleep because we don't need to. We'll be powered all the time. So we'll just leave that alone. And then you have your calibration for your water level. And there is a calibration on their website. So you can come over here to the wiki page about it how to calibrate the soil moisture. You're gonna clean off the probe. You're gonna set it in the air, just keep it not touching anything, turn it on. And then you look at the, the settings page to see uh, the soil ADC. Let's see if that's not shown, nope. So here's diagnostics two not shown. Here's soil ADC on this particular, for some reason on this one, it's not enabled. Uh, it says it's disabled. You can enable this one, okay, and then update. It says it will be added in about 30 seconds. 
All right, now that showed up here as 2.58 volts. And so what you'll do is you'll give the sensor a few minutes to populate that particular entity. And actually it does say you need to enable the entity. So it must come this way, disable by default. So you'll enable it that way. Once the value is populated, you put it into the dry voltage entity. So we'll take that voltage here and we'll put it into the dry voltage entity, which is 2.57. So we'll bring it to 2.57. 2.57 volts, all right? And then next what you're gonna do is you're gonna place the probe in a cup of water, not the entire sensor. So you only wanna put in the part that's below this Apollo line. Don't dunk the whole thing in there, you'll ruin it. But you take this right here and you put it into the water cup. And then uh, you'll grab the soil ADC value and put it into the water voltage entity. So let's go ahead and put this in some water. Remember, only dunk it up to the line. And that's gonna be like that. So let's just take this off and you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so that's sitting in water and we're gonna let that sit there and check our water value. So let's go over and check our water value and see what that comes up with. So our new soil ADC value is 1.4 volts and we're gonna to wanna to place that up here. It's pretty close to what they already had. So we'll make that 1.4 and that matches and there we go. And now you can put it back in the plant and it's all calibrated. So that's how you calibrate that particular device. And I'll get it out of the water now. And now I'll drink that water. No, I won't drink that water. <laughs> All right, so now we have the plant sensor calibrated. It's added to Home Assistant. All we need to do now is plug it in to the plant or put it in the plant and see what the plant shows. So I'm gonna go take it over there and dump it in that plant right now and check the readings. So I put the PLT1 in the plant and I've also put the temperature sensor into the soil. Let's check and see what uh, we see on here. We see that our soil moisture has started to climb Here's where we did the calibration. So that was 100% and we're starting to see the soil moisture climb. I am going to assume that this will settle down once it's been in there a little bit of time. So that just shows you that you can't just plug it in and read a soil moisture. You've got to get, give it some time to actually acclimate to being in the plant and then you can get the value. So we'll let that run for a while and see what it comes up to. The one thing I'm not sure about is the soil temperature it doesn't seem to be doing anything. I'll go and unplug the soil temperature probe and plug it back in and see if it registers. But for some reason right now, it's not showing me any soil temperature. So while I was editing this little video, I talked to the folks over at Apollo Automation about the temperature sensor and why it wasn't showing up. And here's my soil temperature now. The reason why it didn't work initially is that you can't plug the temperature probe into the PLT-1 while it's powered up. Plug it in first to the PLT-1 and then plug in your sensor to power. If you do it the other way around, you're not gonna get any temperature sensor readings. So as you can see, I've got temperature sensor, uh, soil temperature sensor working now and it's showing my soil temperature. So we're all good to go. Just keep that in mind if you run into an issue like that. And then our, our lighting is all over there as well as our temperature and our humidity. Now there is an offset you can set for the temperature and humidity, and you probably will need to do that to compensate for the temperature on the board itself. The ESP does generate a little bit of heat, especially when running Wi-Fi. So you'll need to add a compensation number. The easiest way to do that is to put a, another temperature sensor over there in that area and see what it reads and then adjust your settings here for your humidity and temperature sensor to compensate for uh, whatever that's, that is going to be. And I think I've seen some of these, um, around six degrees, three to six degrees. So I'll have to play with that and just see what that turns out to be. Maybe not quite so much. Let's go down to three degrees. It's probably about, um, I don't know, 73 or 74 in that area right now. So you can adjust this and set it however you want to do that and, and get that running. And one other thing I want to talk about is that there is a flower card that you can add to Home Assistant to view this. You can also set up uh, an account with this plant book, open plant book site. 
and you can search for all the different plants. You can create an API to connect to Home Assistant. And then in this flower card, you'll see this information here uh, that will relate to that particular plant. So that is the PLT one that is going to help you keep up with your plants. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. And also um, you can ask me questions on Discord. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video. So after running this for about a week, this is what I've seen on the moisture. You can see that it continuously drops as it goes along here and you can look at more data. You can go back a little bit farther if you want to. And maybe this isn't a full week, but here we go. Uh, this is the soil moisture that I've been monitoring with that particular plant. This little section right here is when I moved it to uh, take a photo and it kind of dislodged it a little bit. So that's a point I want to make too, is that uh, this little thing right here, if you move the sensor, once you have it placed in there, you're going to get an entirely different reading potentially. Um, so it depends on the soil makeup of that plant that you've got it stuck into. But there's the, uh, the soil moisture and then the uh, temperature. Let me show you that. Here's the temperature uh, for the soil temperature as it's been just sitting there on the floor. Um, so overall, it's uh, doing a good job of keeping up with things. Uh, there's a light level through the day. It's sitting by a window or a door actually with a, or a full glass door. So the light comes in from outside. So it gets lots of light. And so you can kind of keep up with that. Uh, same thing here with the UV. You can see that it's getting some UVs. Uh, you want to use open plant book maybe to uh, figure out whether or not it's getting what it needs. Look up the plant and so forth. Uh, the temperature, air temperature and everything has been pretty uh, consistent. So overall, it's been working well. Um, no issues with it. It continues to update as it's supposed to, and it's going to help me do something with this plant. In fact, I think this actually needs more water now. So I'm going to go water it in a little bit and that'll keep it alive. So thanks to the PLT1, this plant actually might survive. And that's the bonus footage. So thanks for watching this little video and um, go get you one.